We all want to make sure our pets are, you know, happy and healthy, right? But what if I told you there's a silent, invisible threat that could be putting your furry friends at risk? Yeah, a chilling thought for sure. We're talking about radon. Most people think about it in terms of human health risks, but it turns out our pets are vulnerable too. Right, and that's what we're diving deep into today. We're going to be looking at research, articles, even some comments from vets on social media. We've got a whole stack of sources, mm. articles, even some marketing material from a radon mitigation company just to get like a really well-rounded view, right? Yeah, to give us a full picture of radon and how it impacts pets. So before we get into the specifics, let's just break down what radon is. Okay, sounds good. Radon 101. So radon is a naturally occurring radioactive gas. Okay, radioactive, that sounds scary. I know, I know the word radioactive can sound a little scary. Uh. But it really just means that radon releases tiny particles of energy as it decays. And this decay process starts with uranium. Uranium is a radioactive element found in rocks and soil all over the world. So radon is a byproduct of uranium breaking down. Exactly. It's a byproduct of this natural breakdown of uranium in the earth. And because it's a gas, it can seep up from the ground and make its way into our homes. Oh, okay. Through cracks and foundations, gaps around pipes, you name it, even well water. I see. And here's the thing. You wouldn't even know it's there. Really? It's odorless colorless and tasteless. So you can't see it, you can't smell it. It's I, an invisible threat. It really is. And our pets are breathing the same air, so they're exposed to the same risks, right? Exactly. They share our homes, they breathe the same air we do, and we know the health effects of radon on humans are well documented. Long-term exposure, especially at high levels, significantly increases the risk of lung cancer. Right. And we're learning that pets are at risk, too. Yeah. I was reading one of the articles and it was talking about how the health effects and dogs and cats can often mirror what we see in humans. Yeah, it's troubling, but it makes sense. They breathe the same air we do, and those radon particles can damage their lungs just like they can in our lungs. So increased risk of lung cancer in pets too. What are some of the other health problems that radon can cause? Well, one of our sources had a bunch of symptoms that vets have seen in pets that have been exposed to high levels of radon. Things like respiratory problems, so coughing, difficulty breathing, right. lethargy, just not having a lot of energy, decreased appetite. Oh, wow. So those are all really general symptoms. I mean, it could be a lot of things. Exactly. And that's one of the really tricky things about radon poisoning in pets. The signs are often pretty vague and nonspecific. And unfortunately, a lot of times they don't appear until the damage is already done. That's scary. You wouldn't even know there was a problem until it was too late. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's why this comment that we saw from a vet on Facebook was so chilling. They were talking about multiple cases where pets were diagnosed with cancer. Okay. And it turned out that these pets were all living in homes that had high radon levels. Yeah. It was almost like these pets were acting as canaries in the coal mine, you know, alerting their owners to this hidden danger. That's a powerful image. It really makes you think about the role our pets play in our lives. Mm -hmm. Like, could they be alerting us to these environmental hazards without us even realizing it. It is interesting to think about, but we do have to be careful about jumping to conclusions. One of the research papers that we have, um, it's called Radon Gas, Risks and Realities. And it specifically cautions against using pets as radon detectors. So even though we're hearing these stories, we can't just assume that our pets are gonna, you know, magically tell us if there's a radon problem. Yeah. And think about it, they can't tell us how they're feeling until those symptoms get really severe. Yeah. And even then, it's hard to definitively say, oh, this is because of radon. Mm -hmm. It's like relying on your tar's engine temperature gauge to tell you if your tires are low. They're both important, but they're measuring totally different things. That's a great analogy. Mm. So bottom line, if we can't rely on our pets to be these radon detectors, how do we protect them? Well, the answer, as you might have guessed, is proactive testing. Okay, so regular radon testing is key. Yeah. So where can people get their homes tested? Yeah. And how often should they be doing it? Well, the good news is radon testing is pretty simple and it doesn't cost a lot. You can find DIY kits at most hardware stores. Okay. Or you can hire a qualified radon professional. Right. The EPA suggests testing every two years. Okay. 
especially if you live in an area where radon levels tend to be high. And are there like certain areas where our pets spend most of their time that we should be like especially testing? Yeah, totally. You want to think about those areas where your pet loves to hang out, especially if it's close to the ground, like, you know, basements, ground level rooms. Right. Those are the spots to pay attention to. So let's say the test comes back and, oh, no, the radon levels are high. What happens then? OK, well, first, don't panic. The next step is to mitigate the risk. Okay. And luckily, there are really effective methods for reducing radon levels in homes. Mm. The most effective is a radon mitigation system. A radon mitigation system? What is that? Well, it's basically a system designed to either prevent radon from entering your home in the first place or to vent it out safely. I see. So one common type is a vent pipe system. Okay. And this uses a fan to draw radon gas from beneath your house and release it outdoors. So it's like a vacuum cleaner for radon. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Okay. These systems are usually installed by certified radon mitigation contractors. Right. And they can make a huge difference in radon concentration. Okay. The cost can vary depending on like the size and the structure of your home. Sure. But it's really an investment in the health of everyone who lives there. We've been talking a lot about dogs and cats. All right. But what about smaller pets like rabbits, hamsters, birds? Are they at a greater risk from radon? Ooh, that's a great question. And it's one that researchers are still looking into, but we do know that radon primarily affects the lungs. Right. And smaller animals, well, they have smaller respiratory systems yeah. and faster breathing rates. Okay. okay. So it stands to reason that they might be more susceptible. So their little bodies are processing the air much faster than ours. Exactly. Think about a tiny hamster, right, compared to like a Great Dane. The hamster's taking in many more breaths per minute. Right. Their lungs are working so much harder. Right. So any airborne hazard, like weight on, could have a bigger impact. So any advice specifically for those who have smaller pets? Well, the same principle applies. Testing is crucial. Okay. But with smaller pets, you want to pay extra close attention to their enclosures. Right. Okay. Make sure their cages or their habitats are well ventilated. Right. And that you put them in areas of the home with the lowest radon levels. Right. You might even consider using air purifiers that are specifically designed for pet enclosures. Yeah, great point. So you're creating like a, a safe haven within a safe haven. Exactly. And when it comes to specific risks for smaller pets, you know, we are still learning a lot. There's some studies that suggest that hamsters, for instance, might be more susceptible to developing lung tumors from radon exposure. But we need more research to really understand the long-term effects right. for different species. So these pets can't really tell us what's going on, but they're kind of like experiencing the effects of this. So it really is up to us. Yeah, it is. It really highlights how important it is for us to be proactive. Yeah. You know, we can't wait for like definitive answers. We have to act now to protect our pets from potential harm. Absolutely. So besides testing and those mitigation systems, what other steps can we take to kind of minimize exposure? Well, even just limiting their time in areas that have high radon levels. Okay. So if your basement has higher radon levels, maybe create a designated pet friendly space on an upper floor. That makes sense. And of course, regular vet checkups. Absolutely. Routine vet visits can help catch any potential radon related health issues early. Right. And that gives your pet the best chance at successful treatment. Right. So just like with us, early detection is key. Exactly. It's so important to remember our pets rely on us to take care of them. They can't tell us when something's wrong. So we need to be extra careful especially with these hidden dangers like radon. You got it. And, you know, going through all these sources, what really struck me was how much the risks to pets mirror the risks to us. Yeah. It really drives home the importance of taking radon seriously for everyone in the house. It's like this reminder that our homes aren't always the safe havens that we think they are, right? Right. There could be these invisible threats lurking, affecting not just our health, but our animals, too. That's a really important point, and it makes you wonder about other environmental hazards that we might not even be aware of. What about, like, mold, asbestos, or even just everyday chemicals and cleaning products? Yeah, it's like you open a Pandora's box right. once you start thinking about it. And that's where knowledge is so powerful. Right. The more we know about these risks, the better we can protect ourselves and our pets. This deep dive has definitely been eye-opening. I think we often think about radon as just, you know, a human health risk. Yeah. But now we see how our pets are just as vulnerable, if not more so. Mm. And they can't tell us, hey, I don't feel good or, you know, my lungs hurt. 
it's up to us to be aware. Yeah, definitely. It's a big responsibility we have as pet owners to be aware of these dangers that are lurking that they can't see, smell, or taste. Right. So let's just recap what we've learned today. We started by talking about radon, this invisible, odorless gas. Right. And it can seep into our homes. Yep. And it can be a serious risk to our health and to our pet's health. And we talked about the science behind it, how it comes from uranium breaking down in the earth. Yeah. And how it gets into our homes through those cracks and gaps in the foundation. And then we talked about the health effects, not just for us, but for our pets, too. Right. The risks are very similar. Yeah. Radon exposure, especially mm -hmm. over a long period of time, can increase the risk of lung cancer in both humans and in our pets. And then we talked about how difficult it can be to spot radon poisoning in our pets because a lot of the symptoms are so general. Yeah, like coughing or not having much energy. Right. It could be so many different things. And we even talked about that idea of pets being like canaries in a coal mine, you know? Yeah. Could they be warning us about radon without us even realizing it? It's an interesting thought. Yeah. But we have to be careful about assuming that our pet's going to be able to magically tell us if there's radon. Right. Testing is key. Exactly. Regular testing. Whether you're using a DIY kit or getting a professional to come out. Yep. That's the most reliable way to know if you've got a radon problem. And the good news is, if those tests do show high radon levels, there are solutions. Right. Radon mitigation systems, they can really make a difference. Yeah. They can significantly reduce how much radon is in your home making it a safer place for everybody. Exactly. And then we talked about some of the concerns for smaller pets, like hamsters and rabbits and birds. Right. Those little guys. They have those tiny respiratory systems and they breathe so much faster so they could be even more at risk. Yeah. It's a good reminder that our responsibility to our pets goes beyond just, you know, food, water, and walks. Right. We need to be thinking about their environment and the air they're breathing too. Exactly. Creating a safe space for them within our homes is so important. Well, this deep dive has definitely given me a lot to think about. I'll be honest, I used to think about radon as just like, ah, uh, you know, one more thing on my to-do list for my house. But now I see it as something a lot bigger. You know, it's connected to the health of everyone in my house. My pets too. Yeah, that's the power of these deep dives. We take a simple topic and we uncover all this complexity right. and connections that we may not have thought about before. So is there one thing that you would want listeners to take away from this episode? Just test your home. It's easy. And it could have a huge impact on everyone's health, the people and the pets who live there. I love that. Knowledge is power, right? Absolutely. The more we learn about these potential hazards, the better we can protect ourselves and our furry friends. So keep asking questions, keep learning, keep taking action to make a healthier world for everyone.